You're as cold as ice. You're willing to sacrifice our love. Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of the Choke of Views. So I'm hosting this time instead of Cody, and I'm joined this week by Ian Velez. Ian, how are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you yourself? So this is the Notorious Ian. We've mentioned him countless times. I would bet almost every time now on the podcast because he's so relevant in our community in the weeklies. And before we get started, uh, I want to shout out thank you to Cards Viva Lease, our sponsors. Uh, you always are helping us out in the greatest ways. And Sam actually just got a sweet play mat from you oh, completely yeah, saw, out of the blue saw, yeah. for yeah. his birthday. Oh, my goodness. That was insane. So like that's the kind of stuff James does, guys. Go give him your business. Forget every other site. Go to him. Buy your singles, playmats, sleeves, whatever he's selling. You want to buy it. But Ian, we have not mm-hmm. had you on, and I think that's been a great disservice to the community and our viewers oh, okay. because you. you are probably what Sam and I would call the most improved player in the area. Like you've been good, but like now it's kind of scary, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. so Ian, uh, how long have you played? When did you start playing? I started playing uh, Midway Opus 2. So I'd say pro- Opus 2 came out around March. Okay. Of last year. I started playing around like April, May. Okay. So you've been playing. Okay. So not quite the beginning, but basically the beginning of actually having so, some kind of like stock to buy. <laughs> but mm-hmm. you, after the like wasteland days of us not being able to find any boxes or product, it was horrible. Uh, and then. What's your TCG background? Like, other than Final Fantasy, what have you played? I know there's going to be one game you mentioned that everyone's going to be like, oh my god, I didn't know that was... <laughs> yeah, um, uh, my TCG, uh, TCG backgrounds uh, started with Pokemon when I was little, but that's just, like, the usual... I think like, we all kind of had cards at some point for that. Yeah, it's, like, it's kind of like... one my foil out. Charizards to my cousin because I'm an idiot. Like, yeah. I, I know about that. Uh, I, like, walk into your local Walmart or GameStop, buy a pack of, like, Jungle or Fossil or something like that. And after that, got into Yu-Gi-Oh, played it a little bit. That's where I got my itch in card games. I used to play a lot. Mm-hmm. But my main card game was Naruto. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> the game ran for from 2006, 2007 to like 2013. 28 sets. That's actually a lot longer than I thought. 20, wow. Yeah. Okay. I didn't yeah, realize the game went out that long. I bought, I, mm-hmm. I, was say, I bought packs like towards the beginning of it, I remember, and I had a bunch of like old stuff and whatever. But, like, I never heard of anybody playing it. Then again, back then, I just kind of collected card games, and I played at home either with myself or with my brother who had no idea what he was doing. So, like, eh. Yeah, that was, was kind of like the Pokemon Yu-Gi-Oh phase for me. Right. And then, like, I played Magic back in, I don't know if you know the old sets, like Odyssey Block and 7th Edition. That was, like, when I first bought my first pack. I still have my first rare somewhere. Yeah, um, my first pack of uh, Magic was when... Uh... Uh, it was probably like 2005, 2006. That's I, I can't recall exactly the set. That's towards the beginning of modern, I think. I think 2003 was when modern card borders came out. I could be completely wrong. Maybe it's 2005. Mm-hmm. But uh, all right. So you've you've played quite a few games. So from that, right? So you played Opus Two. Now, which mm-hmm. was it? Opus Three or Opus Four? Where you kind of disappeared for an entire set uh opus 4 after opus uh like literally like a week or two after opus 4 came out i disappeared so you were like a staple local you were there every week off up until then and then you just kind of were gone that was because of school right it's school and work i just uh uh like 50 60 hour weeks and uh, sc- uh work plus full-time school uh, yeah, it's pretty brutal took my time. <laughs> uh so yeah you disappeared and then you came back and then you topped the next like four events when you first came back with like cards you've yeah. never seen before, and <laughs> like everyone's yeah, just... had all this practice and like, yeah. So, force to be reckoned with, guys. Now, <laughs> probably the most defining factor, or not factor, but the most defining characteristic of you in this game, is the infamous mono fire. Yes, yes. So is. you you're you've always been on the mono fire train. You've always enjoyed it. You've you've deviated here and there. You've gone like like you were water ice. You were known for that for a while. I think uh, back when uh, six Opus ages three. and Mognet was kind of like a bigger force in the community. Yeah, I, was, yeah, I had like, a yeah, yeah, I had a feature the Ultimate Toolbox. Yeah, yeah. Uh, from the one K we went to in Atlanta, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you've played other stuff, and you still love Ultimisha. I know. <laughs> I still and do. You I played still, some fire yeah. water, and then you went to the dark side and played full mono water at the LQ. And <laughs> hey, 
uh, it worked. Yeah, right. You even named your deck like what is this like Mono Fire Mono, I wish. Mono Fire I wish. <laughs> yeah. it got, like I, what's it called? Uh, we we said it as, uh, right after I won the or after the event. I I told people uh, I told people uh, Mono Fire gives you losses. Mono uh, Mono Water gives you trophies. Yeah, right. And that's so technically. Oh, sorry. That's uh, and that's technically, like. You won that LQ. You crushed me in the finals, but you weren't going to nationals, so you actually conceded to get me into nationals because you knew you were one of the guys blocking for me. So everybody, yeah, yeah, that's well, why I was able to go to nationals because of this guy. I actually just got ranched in the finals. <laughs> so yeah, three, it was, three I don't know if the hand. camera can see it. Yeah, but I I had a horrible start, like awful, like terrible. I couldn't even. I ugh, it was horrible, and I went like turn one Zidane, nothing else, and passed. And then I just hit him like three times with Zidane. It was pretty clear he was sandbagging. <laughs> he had three Famfrets that entire time. <laughs> it was great. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so Mono Fire, you played. Mm-hmm. When did you start playing that? Was that Opus Two? Like when you first uh, started? Did you play Fire? Uh, uh, so I started. I started the the game. The, my first deck I really got into was the uh, the the FF Nine Star deck. Sure. And th- that included Fire Water. Right, but then right. my first pack that I opened was an Opus 1, and I got a legend, which was Bahamut. <laughs> oh, boy, I forgot about it. Yep, this man is and obsessed with Bahamut. Bahamut, like, 9 CP cost, is my favorite card in the game. It's what got me into the game. I, like, I read the card. I thought it was bananas. I don't think his name's and Bahamut, I... though, right? Oh, it's Sky Daddy. There you go. <laughs> That's why I call it. <laughs> so, you're a Sky Daddy fan. So, mm-hmm. you played that. Then, and then, how is it? Trent, this is the main thing I want to talk to you about because everyone always, you know, they used to, you know, crap talk the deck and say it was horrible. And to be fair, mm-hmm. it was pretty bad. Uh, there was not really a good consistent build of it. Fire didn't have much card advantage. It was just kind of what you draw is what you get. All the searchers mm-hmm. were super niche and they weren't even for good cards necessarily. Yeah, <laughs> it's not fair. It's probably one of the main things I've, I, I've, I've inputted about Th- Things like Isail searching an ice, any ice forward, uh, the uh, Merle Whip searching any water forward. Those are really the colors that needed the searchers, right? The universal searcher. <laughs> so you've struggled. However, yeah. say Opus 5 was, you know, when it, fire became more of an element, uh, typically in dual colors, though. Then Opus mm-hmm. 6 came around, and people started kind of finding builds. How did you feel about Modifier and Opus 6? Um, Modifier and Opus 6, it, I think the, it, it really turned around a lot. My favorite, I think the card that gave Fire kind of like the burst it needed was uh, Seven Drop Phoenix, mm-hmm. in my opinion. I think that card is really good. Uh, <clears throat> luckily, it works a lot better in with other elements because you can tinker around with uh, right, right, other right. C- through C3. Like I love casting F- Phoenix, then bring a Stola to cancel something. Right. Right. And kill right. your dude. <laughs> right. I've done that before. So you got three for one at that point. Yeah. 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 So it's, it's so it, it opened a lot of like, <clears throat> you would say more, uh, proactive plays for fire. More options, like more options. Modifier because modifier forever has been mainly... like unblockable, chunks of damage, mm-hmm. kind of haste. Like that's <laughs> it's... yeah, kind of. It, it, it's just um, most when when fire or like red is considered in other elements, it's pretty much that type of uh, like characteristic it has. Right, it's like a with flame. All, all the card games. bursts up and then just dwindles out. <laughs> yeah, it's but, just. Uh, what, oh, sorry. It's just what this uh, with this card game uh in reliance to like EX burst and everything, it can slow the deck a lot down. Right. Um, I, I don't, I can't tell you how many times I've lost a game because of a Leviathan or something that slowed me down. Right. Um, like water has like what? Let's see. Famfrit, Leviathan, <clears throat> Yuna, Wind has Chaos Walker, Alexander's, uh, what's the other? Uh, not a Diablos, but they they have some relevant EX bursts. Yeah, then there, there's there's plenty. Believe me, Fire I've has like Brynhildr, which without uh, Katuna's Brynhildr, <laughs> four damage Bahamut that deals uh, you your damage. But that's not an EX burst even. Oh, you're talking about the one that 10k. 10k. Oh yeah. yeah. So yeah, then you take a damage for it. Like Water Wind gets this EX burst that just straight kills your guy, exiles it, and then oh hey, you're removes it from game. Yeah. And then like it's. Perfect removal. 
fire mm-hmm. gets hopefully seven K is enough to kill your guy. Like, <laughs> yeah. Fire's been shafted for a while. So um, open yeah. six though, you said, yeah, it kind of came back. Now the other part mm-hmm. I want to talk about though, I want to talk about your dark cards. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I like the dark cards. So how many dark reason. cards, there was an event we played. I remember the, the one, uh, the one in Orlando. In Orlando, where we all played random stuff, you brought them on a fire, and we told mm. you you had too many dark cards. I did. How many was it? Around eleven and thirteen dark cards. I, I thought thirteen was the number. That's the number I remember. It's around. It's around that amount. And that was before we had Camelot. Yeah. Was it, that... was, it was. It was Opus Four. It was Opus Four. Oh, this was pre Cam. Mm hmm. Ooh boy. <laughs> so yeah. yeah. Main reason. Yeah. Main reason I did that is because I ran through Shadow. Fair. Yeah, no, exactly. That, that that was kind of the way I liked to build fire back then, was just hoping that you could run these giant, like, Sephiroth to get rid of Minwoo's already. And mm-hmm. if you don't need it, then you just chuck it for 8k with Shadow at something, which is pretty sweet. Yeah. Uh, so now, looking at Opus 7 is where I want to focus. Mm-hmm. Walk me through either, I don't know if you want to go with your most recent list, uh, yeah. text uh, board, uh, whatever, because I know you've utilized a couple of new cards that I kind of I liked, but I wasn't like super keen on. However, after watching you play with them, it's impressed me. So talk about that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so probably my favorite card for fire and oh, Opus Seven is me because it gives it, it gives it that pseudo searcher that it needs. Mm-hmm. Fire. Uh, sometimes oh, like turn like turn one, turn two, like maybe in turn three, you don't want to see the fire summons in your hand. You want to build up your board. You want to fo- you want the forwards. You want the ways to get it get to your opponent other than like bill Bel- ice that's the only real uh summon you want to see mm-hmm. so with me you're able to pitch those cards you don't need and get the forwards and the backups you need exactly <clears throat> but what's been successful for me is actually on uh when people were talking about modifier uh for opus 7 they said the best card was yuri mm-hmm. uh it's best fire card but i was like no, I went the opposite way. I went with dark cards. And because <laughs> my favorite thing would do is because fire has a lot of prevalent five drops. Yes. So it's always been a downfall when, of it, right? Like it's so <clears throat> many good five drops that like you yeah. can't actually play all of them. You just can't yeah, like, unless you, all of your backups so, are two CP and you have like 20 of them. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> like I don't want to see Zande early early game. I don't want to see Jack early game. Uh, I played, I'm playing the, uh, for the five drop, uh, like Edgar. Uh, I'm, that's what I... I Text in instead. I don't want to see it early game. Mm-hmm. Uh, so what I so what I did is me. So pitch those fire dark card the fire cards to give me a real good dark card, which is Camelot. Right. That's worked wonders for me. Uh, in terms of testing and playing. Uh, that's probably my favorite engine like uh, I made with fire, is uh pitching my fire cards to get my dark cards. Right. Or vice versa. Right. Because I've seen you go. Uh, I don't remember if you were playing Nidhogg or Sin. It was one of the nine drops. Pitch that. Yeah. Go find Bahamut. Yeah, I would I would pitch nine drop Bahamut early game to get a Sin or a Nidhogg in response to whatever my uh, my current opponent's board is. Right. Now, I forget, though. Do you play the new Lulu, the 2CP break your own backup? I play I, I one of. Okay, because I was going to say, that'd be pretty sweet with Meath. You know, early game, get your development, go find your Chaos to help your curve and play Cam and search Spiritus, whatever it is you're playing. Because mm-hmm. uh, you play Spiritus as well, correct? Uh, Yes, but I've actually removed it. Hecaton? It, uh, no, not really Hecaton. It's because usually whenever I have Camelot, this is my main Dark Four I want to get. It's already not a dark forward. Uh, in 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 response after after the first turn, so there's no need for me to have spiritus, because the only dark forwards I would run would be uh, Camelot, Tor Drop Emperor, and then either Sin or Nidhogg, mm-hmm. depending. Um, it's just a, a minute. Uh, I, I it was it was all thanks to Sam. I tw- tweaked it a little bit. Mm-hmm. Told me that I shouldn't have this uh, card, and I I, t- I tweaked it, and I didn't see any relevance for it. Other than like maybe having Emperor, and then like dropping a Nidhog, but usually if I have one one or the other, there's no need for the other one. From my, my testing. That's fair. Yeah, I, I guess all of your nine drops are like I need to kill two big guys with damage, or mm-hmm. I need to remove something that can't take damage, or I need a board wipe. <laughs> like, yeah. and either way, all three of those are pretty big reset buttons. Like Nidhog mm-hmm. actually is probably the least of the three of a reset button. 
because it only takes out one thing technically. Yeah. But it's such but a I've, big I've, body I've actually, card from hand. But I've actually preferred Nidhogg over Sin. Mm -hmm. Right, because you because, have such important forwards. Yeah, I have important forwards, and usually the forwards that Fire can take out are only like one or two. Mm -hmm. Like Ishtola, Ash is hard to get rid of. Yeah. And stuff like that, and Nidhogg carry uh, deals with that, and then pretty much all the other forwards, uh, my Bahamuts and my Zondes can deal with. See, but now you can so play I Phoenix see it, into Halicarnassus, and Ash loses all of her abilities. <laughs> no. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> but I actually, I actually think uh, Ash is not really that big of a problem for me in Fire exactly. because I think the best the best counter card for Ash is Rin Mage. Oh right, yeah, it can't block right. Because uh, like yeah, it can't block. It's so. Like whenever somebody drops an ash on me with fire, it doesn't. It's not big at that big of a relevance. It's because either ninja or red mage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I actually played your dark version. I was teaching two people how to play in my town, uh, more mm -hmm. locally, and I just I I remember I messaged you and you're like, "What do you need it for?" I'm like, "I just need it. I just need a deck to play." Because <laughs> they were they're playing <laughs> yeah. my earth and wind. One was playing like yeah, lightning and earth. And like, yeah, you I, mentioned I, you're I like, had I nothing built. The wind cards. I didn't want to turbo ice them, although I did uh, later. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, what does that leave me? I'm like, I can play fire something, water something. Mm, he want, he has uh, YRP built. All right, Ian, send me Mono Fire. And I played that, and it was pretty <laughs> sweet. Uh, having the um, – oh, my goodness. We were just talking about it. <laughs> what, the Dark Hearts? Oh, having the ninjas and, like, red mages, like, at all times, I just felt like I couldn't lose the game. Because it was like, if I ever needed to, I'd just be like, can't block, can't block, kill you. Like – yeah, yeah. Uh, that and then my my favorite new favorite back to run with uh with uh fire is the the uh, t uh on tap uh, I mean the break and the deal four k to drop it just got reprinted black mage or the new black one mage, I think yeah. is also black mage somewhere on those lines but yeah that one uh is my new it's just because it it, it helps finish off some forwards and they, like suppose if somebody drops uh something in fire has a problem with like cobalt droid is a pain in the butt to get rid of so yeah, i i say i say it for that it's things as such i say like so it's, it can follow up on zande right zande hits for four yeah. black mage hits or five hit uh, yeah. black mage hits so for four. yeah mm -hmm. uh, or i mean if you're gonna say the viking 4k one 5k the other hit you uh, mm -hmm. yeah definitely sweet so what other cards have you kind of started leaning towards now uh, there's one I have in mind, but I'm waiting for you to get to it. What what cards from the new set, or like what other cards from old sets for Mono Fire have kind of like helped you shape it into the competitive force it is now? Um, I for me, I think the best fire card in the game, in my opinion, is Sabin. Okay. Uh, I think that that card is just scary, no <laughs> matter who's uh, uh, on my turn. Uh, just being able to make anything not break and then being able to wipe the board with an AK. That's why in my fire build, I run two Edgar because I want to see my, the Sabins in my hand while he's on the field. <laughs> in my hand. <laughs> yeah, because if you have an Ash, it's like, okay, I'm just going to S ability with uh, the Sabin and then she, oh, she's gone. Right, right. We'll have to deal with that. So yeah, it's uh, it gives that it gives fire that board wipe that kind of needs that isn't a nine draw Bahamut. <laughs> yeah. Cause, uh, or it's, Sin, killing your own guys, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, these days, as, as much as I, I love the nine drop, uh, there's so many ways to just react to it with uh, bouncing your own guy, you stole or something. I don't want to uh, ha have that as my only option to remove more than one forward. Right. Yeah, and like Sabin's is. thing is not an auto or a summon, so you still can't stop it. So. Mm hmm. Yeah, so he just deals AK to the board. It, it won't kill Ishtola, but <laughs> Ishtola's not going to block him. So. All right. So, okay, how has Lon been for you? Lon? Um, at first, I remember That's when I... That's much more hesitant than I expected. I, I thought Lon was insane when I was playing it. I'm like, oh, cool, 4 drops, oh, yeah, 10 no, no, no. He, he was, he was. He's not... Yeah, I, I just I, I thought, since you said, uh, you, even with previous, so I, I dropped, like, the best... I, well, I think well that'd be, like, part. rain in this situation, right? Like, the rainy experts to search the new Lon? Whew. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, that's, I, that's a one of on my deck. Um, Lon has been... Something and towards the right direction for fire because I really like the you may that that's just t those two words uh make a lot for it right um in terms of being a towards the plays that it opens for fire um I've been able to border wipe uh three forwards in one turn with lawn oh because you fight one fight one fight one kind of thing yeah because uh, yeah because uh what I would or sometimes uh you can also do is you can uh 
have like make your let's suppose they're tapped and maybe they have like one forward up, uh ninja, swim with lawn, hit for damage, and then on on damage, uh just start pinging everybody for like nine nine 10k damage. Yeah, and if you have Sabin out, he can't break, so you just yeah. nuke, 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 nuke. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, that's actually what I did. Oh play I I don't know what the board was. I, I had to go so in, but I swung with Sabin, AK the board, ninja somebody, and then I swung with Lon and then finished off the one forward that was like a 9k or 10k, 10K drop. That's a lot of CP. <laughs> yeah. It's, but, uh, uh, two one, card, but, so it's four plus a card, then a Lon fight is two more cards. So yeah, it, I, I, I had five. Well, it, well, technically it was, I had five, I had five backups, tap for four, Ninja one and then two cards from hand. Oh, and then the Sabin. So three right, and the Sabin special, right, right. So three cards from hand and all my backups. Sounds like a lot more than that, but yeah, it's, <laughs> it, it it takes a lot less for other elements to do it, but it's a lot flashier when fire does it. Right. Hey, that's good. Fire's flashy, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. Flickering flames. So, uh, moving on from that, how do you feel about like these heavy dark packages in general? Like right now, I feel like. Be, it, completely ignoring Tilika, because like Tilika's a cool card that you can you know pitch mm-hmm. light and dark yeah. to make CP, and she's really greedy. She's a five k. She's pretty easy to kill. Like yeah, I I want that's one of the cards I want to be good. I want to play some greedy deck, but it's just, I can't, I can't. You know, uh, like I, I saw the card, but I I I it would only warrant for you to play it if you were building something like I did with op- that open sport deck, having like twelve thirteen dark cards. If not, if you have like four or five, I think it's just a waste of a slot. Right, and right now a lot of people are high on Yuri for good reason. The card's insane. You've died to it. You, I think you might have played with it at some point. Uh, I did. It. I, I did go against it, but I had a camel out on field, so the Yuri did nothing. <laughs> oh yeah, because you just name any element and Yuri's. Meh. Yeah, and Yuri's every every element but dark. So yeah, so Yuri's great. It's hard to kind of justify playing any monocolor deck without it, except for maybe your situation with Mono Fire, uh, mm-hmm. or maybe Mono Water with Fusoya, I guess. Yuri's just insane, guys. Play Yuri, shove it in your deck, yeah. find space. Um, for it. I've also I've also made a light card version of Mono Fire for this new set. Mm-hmm. How does how does that look? Like, what cards did you include? Um, I put the Yuri. I put two Yuri. I put as a Dan, uh, three draws of Dane because it works with Vivi. You can so you can kill a guy and then two CP Zidane, either discard or draw. So I just realized, Ultima is like the ultimate fire card. Because it removes cards from the top of your deck to remove their guys <laughs> <laughs> to play something. <laughs> yeah, but I, Dark Lord I, I, Ultima I, I, got it. <laughs> just, it's like, oh, I don't have a deck, so <laughs> let's just go all in. I can't but search yeah. these cards in my deck anyway. Might as well get rid of them. <laughs> no. Uh, right. Anyway, sorry. Continue light. Yeah, because no, yeah, so like, so VV and Zidane, that's a pretty good. I uh, like that combo. And uh, the the one thing I put in was a. Uh, the heck is his name? A six drop light card, Harvard. Great Sauger? That exactly yeah. that. <laughs> I yeah, that. I like that. I, I like that card a lot. Um, that's that's one of my top uh, unrated cards for sure. Yeah, because um, something that fire uh, falls down to is going against decks that are reactive. Oh well, yeah, they, they, they react on like fire. Where I I react whenever. Suppose I have a Bahamut. I only I can only play that card whenever you play a forward. Right um it more with other elements it's really good for them to like layla viking whenever they can it's it, it's good in any, any situation unless you're decking out so playing that card being able to remove their break removes their options and you just keep beating their face in right i still want to see somebody have the blowout play you know tama the 2cp yes i want to see someone do some crazy like phoenix bring back this and like whatever and then just they go tama for six Sugger, <laughs> remove your break. <laughs> like... I, I, I do want to. I would love to see that. Uh, more realistically, it'd be Tama for White Mage. Pay two CP and bring the White yeah. Mage in and remove your guy. But yeah. I, I, I sort of remember when, when the when X Death was first revealed, the new six spot drop backup was. Uh, I was like, wait, does White Mage also declare your own break? And then I, I read it, and it doesn't. So you, you could just declare somebody in their break. <laughs> And XF will be fine. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Huh. Okay. But yeah, so what I was saying is, like, everyone wants to play light cards, dark cards. But I feel like because they're printing all these things like Meath, right? 
We have Meath. Mm -hmm. We have Poo Poo. Uh, I'm trying to think of like other elements, what we have to like discard our own cards. Oh, one of my new favorite techs, which I don't know if it's good yet. I put, I literally put this card into a deck that had no other lightning cards, uh, is mm -hmm. Mid Previa. Yeah. So Mid Previa, you can discard any three That's cards. Good. It does not, if you're not paying CP, you're just discarding cards so you can get rid of light and dark. So I built mm -hmm. like a really greedy, uh, I'll have to show it to you later or something, a uh, really greedy dark themed mono earth deck. I think I think you showed it to me. I think and you it did. had three mid previa just randomly in it. And yeah, the deck had like that. triple Gabrant, triple um Zodiac, had like Cam, I think Sin and or Nidhog. Uh and with Gaul Fires, Desk, that card's insane. Spiritus and Chaos. Like the deck's cool, but like I don't know how good it is. But like the idea I... that we have all these thing all these tools now to get rid of our hand indiscriminately of element like light and dark i think is mm -hmm. an interesting direction that the game's moving yeah and that card is actually really good in the in that element with mono earth because mono earth is the one element where you can recur both some we recur summons backups in forwards right, from right. so yeah so you can just go like minor pitch whatever and like you get back in earth back up and oh no the mid previa mm -hmm. is in the break zone now and just anytime in on your turn in the game you just be like huh these are three named characters i already have on the field discard kill your 9k because that's yep. what this card is like it's actually pretty sweet i like it um so i found it very interesting kind of how i know in uh chapters i don't know how familiar people are with chapters but there were some decks that were very heavy in light and or dark cards i don't know mm -hmm. how i've looked at the composition of the decks and it still doesn't make sense to me how they were able to sustain it but they were successful and like i think it's interesting to move in that direction we're also getting dark is kind of been known to have like the big heavy hitters right it's got sephiroth nidhogg yeah. sin Camelot. cam's pretty big emperor's kind of like was on the low end emperor and shadow lord were kind of like two tech choices depending on what you thought your meta was going to be like but mm -hmm. now we have galdes or galdes however you want to say that name yeah, that, the that three cp 8k is absurd and then it has three relevant abilities that like the discard is the option that like oh i don't have any other things to do so you might as well mm -hmm. get rid of a card then it has the Neg 5k, which could be relevant. It also has yeah, the bring back a Get Back a Monster. Like, if you're playing an Earth Wind deck with Cactors, get back a Cactor that you sacked earlier, or a Layak. Or if you're playing a Monsters deck, go back Green Dragon. Or you're playing some weird Earth Lightning deck, get back Flondit. Like, <laughs> there, there's so many things you can do with it. And I think that's really cool how we're starting to get, like, more of a curve filled with the Dark and Light cards. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I still, I, I've always preferred the Dark card abilities over the Lights just because. They've had more of an oomph and impact. Right. I believe more the light cards were they have been very more specific to a deck. Right. Kind of like the Warrior Lights deck, the, right? Mm -hmm. Like the new Yuna is very much like strict, just like summon reveal type of thing. Uh, what else? Uh, the, the, light, the, wow. the, the three drop light cloud only in like with with only <laughs> FF7 forwards. Sure. Yeah. Um, but I guess light cards are more powerful, maybe in like their own shell, like where they're supposed yeah. to be. They're, they're supposed and to be. Yeah, they're, they're supposed to be. Just like mm -hmm. <laughs> I have this effect now that yeah. I needed in my deck. Uh, yeah, that, that's an interesting. Yeah, I've never thought of it that way. Yeah, because like in terms of the uh, light cards, I think the only ones that have like fire type of rele relevance have been the seven drop cloud. But there's not. I don't want. There's not any FF seven forge other than like Tifa that mm -hmm. want to run in my model fire only mono fire or uh light card cloud haters are gonna <laughs> or cloud lovers are gonna hate you four cp <laughs> cloud bro the card is amazing right <laughs> yeah it's, it's it's seen so much play <laughs> yeah no i mean that card's awesome it has two cool abilities and stuff just it has yeah. the same play oh yeah it, it's it's it, it's it has a good fire like fire type of effect with the, the first I mean, one it basically is a fire card right like yeah being able to four k the board is pretty good and just like the fact that all the clouds are friend fire, and yeah. mm -hmm. it's unfortunate that the three CP experts is a light card, but yeah, it's pretty strong. And then there's also the Vaughn. The I I I, I tinker with a lot along with that when Vaughn's he came out. Basically, a fire wind card. Like if they could have a hybrid element card, that I think that would be a, a wind fire card. And that's what I did when Opus Five came out. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what the first thing I built was a fire wind, and I put Vaughn's in there. Vaughn was, was like. Yeah. I feel like Vaughn was kind of the predecessor to Chalinka Yuri. Like, he was a one-man army in mm -hmm. that kind of way. So, he can get rid of blockers. He can make a guy bigger. He can just randomly draw a card if they only have one guy to worry about. But normally, it's the modes are, that can't block, that's dull, 
And if you block with that guy, he's too small, he's going to die. So it's like... And then if you don't have anything on board, I'm like, oh... Make your draw. decision. Oh, by the way, I have other attackers, too. That card was brutal. Mm -hmm. Obviously, costing five made it really difficult, but if it costs four, it would be way too good. Uh, and now Yuri and Chalinka kind of have that same feel of, like, if you let them attack together, it's really hard to come back from that. Like, whether yeah. you're stacking no-no triggers to 9k their board, or even, like, just 9k one guy or something, or whatever, with Chalinka's damage bonus, it's stupid... Uh, yeah, Yuri yeah, gets rid yeah, of yeah, guys, yeah. and like if they party attack, they kill something. Yeah, or even with the backup that just either widespreads the damage with both of them there, or just one. Right. Yeah. That's so what he, without without even them good. doing their abilities, good. Right. So, I feel like uh, yeah, Vaughn was kind of like that one man army of like, if I get to attack, you're gonna be in trouble. That's kind of like how these are now, except they're you know they have a searcher, which so does Vaughn, but cost five i don't know <laughs> yeah no, it, it, well it's just when he came out very popular summon was diabolus with a five true. drop true and it, it was with all the earth wind decks that were running around and everything it was it was it was a very popular target to just get rid of like oh cool just kill that on tap all right what else can i do <laughs> it's like... yeah the, and your only way around it is to drop a ishtola but you at that point you're already spending a lot of cp right that's like eight cp and yeah and that's mm -hmm. if they have nothing else at the, at the yeah. like best for you i guess so another topic you brought up that you want to talk about we kind of tickled it a little bit when we talked about fire is most improved cards so when, when i talked to you about you know coming on here at first we we're going to do like a, a choke of bruise episode actually but sam's been putting out a lot of those so i kind of wanted to stray away from that not to like mm -hmm. oversaturate and plus the stuff i want to talk about may or may not be something that we're kind of trying to you know <laughs> Make sure it's not like the best thing before we talk about it, because mm -hmm. yeah. there's a sweet trophy to win in January at the reunion event hosted by Cards of Evilies on January 12th. Anybody who'd like Indeed. to fly into that and try to win that sick trophy, this is the most amazing thing. Like, I would never think to make a trophy with a magnetic base to just have a thing spin constantly. It it's unreal, and I guess it lights up and like plays music or something. Also, which I oh, didn't I, I've, heard, I've heard of it. I don't. Th I, I watched the video, but I watched it. On but yeah, I saw it. So. I, it's pretty sweet. Everyone come to that. Anyway, we don't know if the decks would be great for that or not. And obviously, we're kind of in it to win it. And we're not trying to be like mm -hmm. as sketchy as like Nationals oh, yeah, was, yeah. to be honest, which was like so much cloak and dagger. People are trying to like spectate your Octagon match, look at your deck and leave. Like that, oh, that was God. happening. Like it was absurd. It's not going to that level, but um, there's some stuff yeah. we want to work out. And, and honestly, the decks. Uh, I've been obsessed with Moogle FFCC. I'll just touch on this briefly. I think the card's amazing. The fact that you can put in Earth Core, which already has the best backup line in the game. I'm sorry. If you disagree with that, I don't know what to tell you. Like, whether it be Earth, Wind, or even... I'll like, agree as well. Like, Minor, Minfilia. All of my decks right now are starting with three Moogle FFCC, two Minor, Minfilia, two Shantoto, and then three Cactor Summon. Go. Like, that has been my go-to formula lately. And there's a lot of, like, greedy little packages you can put in. Like, uh, the video Sam just put out, you could put in, like, a Dorgan-type thing. Uh, there's a lot of stuff you can do with it. And mm -hmm. there's some cool little, like, combo elements to it uh, that I don't know if they're amazing or not. That's also kind of what I didn't want to talk about. I was like, I don't even know if this is proven. It just looks sweet and sounds powerful. But, like... Yeah, on paper, it looks really know. well. Yeah. So, anyway, enough of that plugging. What are your... Oh, yeah. So, we were talking about topics, right? Mm -hmm. and you brought up like uh there's a lot of cards you think have improved and the ones that came to my mind were obviously mono flyer focus like rain or like indirectly like the dark cards because of the searching like bahamut stuff like that mm -hmm. uh the five drops uh you also been playing the new ject uh, i guess you're not playing the old ones yes. so i want to be improved but ooh, yeah no i thought about it <laughs> so old cards that have gotten better do you have like a top 10 in mind do you have just kind of like a, a spattering of them or like what's what do you have in mind top 10 um it doesn't have to be card, top 10 it can be whatever you okay so cards that i well at least this card is still insane and probably has done a lot for me is is Illua. that card's just so dumb improved the card's always no, no, I improved. <laughs> yeah no i, I know but, I, but <laughs> me playing i've been playing mono lightning and just lightning bruise a little bit more yeah and Actually, having that card in my disposal, I'm like, if I had something like that. If Fire had Illua. Yeah, well, but see, then they'd have to give it a good S ability. 
that like reduces power instead of dealing damage. That's a big no-no yeah. for fire, right? <laughs> so do uh, as cast the S, ab S ability, do all your forwards. Yeah, deal. and then it happens. Yeah. All right. So what what other ones would you say? Um, for me, uh, I've been tinkering a lot with Lulu decks for the past. Jesus, it seems like a month or so. When it comes to these decks, uh, in terms of cards that uh, have gotten better, um, other than the dark cards at, uh, reoccurring with the fire engine, well, fire engine, I mean, Meath. Right. Uh, fire dark, that whole tutoring engine, yeah. Yeah. I would have to really look into specifications of the cards that recently got life. But uh, I, there's some text like uh, the new, I love the new Gilgamesh. But bring back with the uh, the old Kepka. Okay. Yep. That's and actually then, another and, deck I've considered bringing up. Yeah, because because even if he even if after he goes away, you can just bring the same forward back, which is just two CP. <laughs> right, right. So okay, cool. I'm gonna lose two. I'm gonna, I'm assuming twice with this dude. He's gonna re be removed, and then he's gonna come back. But I'm gonna play against so, Alfred. He's gonna EX burst a Chaos Walker, so it's okay. <laughs> yeah, no, oh, no, let's, not talk about, let's not talk about Chaos Walker. Uh, I, just, I just went through my little PTSD uh, last week with them. But yeah, so something I've been tinkering with was, obviously I'm I'm a big lover of Gilgamesh. Anybody who's listened to a majority of our podcast should know that by now. Uh, the two CP Gilgamesh is sick. Trying to make him work. I mm -hmm. think it's actually not, you don't need to have as many Gilgamesh do you think you do to make him good. Like he's just... No. Like two CP. Yeah, I, 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 I don't think you need the Gilgamesh. I think you need more pumping. Yeah, so of, of that Gilgamesh. If you have the Lulu backup, right? Puts him a meet and say we'll just say one Gilgamesh in the break zone. That already puts him to uh, five, six, no, six, six. Oh, he's, he's a he's, he's, he's a four K. Oh, so you don't need Lulu. I mean, or you just don't need a Gilgamesh. You need one or the other. And then yeah, Kefka pump. Put him to ten. And just now in the same deck, you can use the new Ramza. The new Ramza is a two CP one or a one CP two K that you pay mm -hmm. a lightning to pump it by two, and you can do it reusable. Mm -hmm. And if he has four K power, I think he has haste. Six K power, he's got first strike. Eight K brave, some combination of those, right? If you have Lulu, and you have Kafka, you go one CP play Ramza, pump with mm -hmm. Kafka. Now he's an eight K and has all three abilities. And yeah. oh, by the way, Zemus is a card <coughs> that brings back one and two CP forwards pretty easily because it pretty only costs bad. their CP cost. So you go next turn, you dull him, bring back either Gilgamesh or him, and then pump them and swing. And obviously, you're playing Red Mage <coughs> to give Gilgamesh haste because that's not a given. Oh, yeah. And then it, it, it will stop a deck if you're doing like what I told you with like with like Earth. If you do like an Earth Lightning matchup, you can, you can have like a, a Modi give, swing at the uh, Zemus with a Brave and then. Oh man, you could even do that. Yeah, that's sick. Yeah, yeah. So and it'll then, be a little bit. And like if you have five backups, it's Lulu, Kafka, Red Mage, X, Y, and you go mm -hmm. pay with Lulu and whatever to tell <coughs> Zemus bring back Gilgamesh and you go pump mm -hmm. and then just like pitch a card to give haste, like or Ramza. Yeah. It's the engine's there, I think it's kinda cool. And then obviously you play other cards like Wall, because Wall's good in every deck. Like mm -hmm. <laughs> he just is. Uh and pretty sweet idea so kafka um for me card that has been very good for me even though some people uh might not like it just because of how high the cp cost is is actually the dark kafka, right. uh sephiroth oh, i was gonna guess okay now i wouldn't have guessed that uh you know acp sephiroth uh he's been very good to me uh the past couple like past like month or so in locals I think there's a least. lot of people that rely so much on some of their very important backups and like sometimes yeah. just getting rid of something is very disruptive like, I think yeah. I've played a game before with your fire build where my opponent kind of had a awkward, you went, like, minor, get back nothing. So I was like, mm -hmm. okay, that's pretty bad. And then he goes, like, next turn, like, play cam, chaos. I'm like, immediately Sephiroth or chaos? Go to no cards in hand, go. <laughs> and then, like, that yeah. set them back so far because they were expecting to have that backup. Like, mm -hmm. it's kind of like the old... 
Mono Ice uh, Celeste plays, where you would just search a Celeste on turn two or three and just, like, freeze one of their backups. And that one CP can be so detrimental for them to not yeah, have. Uh, I could definitely see Sephiroth being... Yeah, um, it's just... Uh, well, the decks have been coming out lately uh, with Sid 2, Fusoya, Lulu, uh, Snow, stuff like that. Uh, backups have been more prevalent and more important. Uh, it seems, at least from the talks that we've seen, we'll, we'll know whenever Worlds comes around <laughs> and the, the, this new meta comes in. But with all those, all these backups, uh, relevant decks that have been very important, uh, it, it helps you not having to be stuck with uh, Earth ha- having Hecatons or an Archer, which right. is pretty slow. Which is pretty slow. Uh, some can, it, it can be pretty slow sometimes to run the Archer. Yeah, and like Archer, uh, I mean, splashing for Archer specifically with the goal of using its ability consistently is pretty bad in a deck that mm-hmm. wants to be mainly a mono color because like it's double wind if it was wind and one yeah. it wouldn't even be nearly as impactful but like that double yeah. wind cp that's kind of why i think mog mobius hasn't seen as much play like mm-hmm. the card's insane just go search any forward but the double earth makes it really hard to splash in a deck yeah um, it's one of those really things where like it's it's a, it's a wind card and i think wind is one of the elements that doesn't need the archer because it it, it doesn't need to get around really min woo because it's most uh, of his things are nowadays it kind of does because like if people are playing the uh, a honolim and they're like relying on that heavily like kind of like my mono wind is probably pretty weak to min woo yeah because it's very damage based and i want to be no no comboing mm-hmm. but yeah you could play a version without it with like barbarisha and stuff uh, I, yeah. I could buy that but like also Aerith is a thing now so like uh but I, that's actually i was gonna say yeah i, I thought uh, i was gonna say a, a, a card that's gonna be more relevant with how we're talking about the meta right now, is going to be the three drop Aerith backup. Yeah, I mean, let's talk the about the stops, right? Like all of the backups in Lulu H decks, right? <laughs> like literally, mm-hmm. Fusoya, the Previa, <coughs> Lulu, Black Mage. The only thing that doesn't stop really is your Sage targeting your thing. Like that's that's about yeah. it. And like then, the, I think so, the, yeah. the the one element that card doesn't really touch is water, because most of water backups rely about just. Kind of like Gladiator, Yuna's, and stuff like that. Like, it makes Yuna um, age more awkward, I guess. Because they yeah, have to bounce their own thing. <laughs> which is actually really funny. Well, it's not a Yuma. But yeah, yeah, I'd rather run the two drop, but that's just me. Yeah, it's definitely more of a wind water, I guess. Mm-hmm. But. Hmm. Huh. Yeah, I can see that. I guess, actually, it's kind of cool if you want to play Aerith with a really greedy, uh, um, like uh, light or dark deck, like we we're talking about, and you're relying on Cosmos or Chaos. Hecaton can't mm-hmm. hit two CPs, and Archer can't target anything if you have Aerith. So like that kind of actually locks mm-hmm. them out. It's actually better than Yagrosh. Yeah, that's interesting. Hmm. You do like a Final Fantasy yeah, seven think... based light deck. <clears throat> yeah, I think it's a it's a good card just to have because uh it doesn't cost too much. And then also, it's just it's just good to have, just because, like I said, how many of uh, these decks are being more backup prevalent from all, the, all these talks that have been going around. It's just a safe card to have. It's just randomly good, too, sometimes, right? Like, you, mm-hmm. people get stuck. Like I said, with the Lulu H, I actually had somebody once, when I was playing that Fire, Wind, Final Fantasy Seven like, Chocobo, Hasty, Kill You Fast deck. Yeah. And mm-hmm. Opus, or Fire, whatever it was. That deck played Aerith, and, like, some of the coolest plays were, like, you know, you'd go turn one whatever search up fat chocobo with izana and play like a two cp backup pass mm-hmm. play fat chocobo get haste chocobo and then pitch one card play Aerith. like mm-hmm. that was a sweet line that deck had and there was a time where i had Aerith out and people like weren't kind of used to playing against it so they're like oh okay cool it just you know una h bounce your thing i'm like nope <laughs> Yeah. But you also can't not choose something if there's a legal target, so you got to bounce your guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And then they didn't couldn't replay it, and I just went like three U. It was pretty yeah. good for them. But yeah, yeah so some, people it. forget that sometimes they'll play something and just they end up having a target their own because like a couple of the er- I think it's actually mainly earlier sets they've done a lot more uh, different wordings now where it specifically says opponent controls or whatever else. But like in mm-hmm. Opus One, a lot of those cards don't say that. Yeah, no, they do not. Yeah. Like Rigdia. Yeah. I hate when like a new player plays Rigdia because we always tell them, oh, hey, yeah, that's one of the good decks. It's got value in it. It's got staples, you know. Play the yeah. FF13. Now it's more like Cadet or uh, Scions, but 
But and then they go like, "Oh, sweet, play this Rigdia," and I'm like, "Got to shoot your own Rigdia." <laughs> yeah, uh, it's also a, a card that's very relevant when it comes to that. Is the three uh, <clears throat> three cost uh, Shiva? It should it should choose up to two of your opponent's forwards, not yours. So you can't like use that card to react to your like let's suppose an Alice combo or anything. I've probably tried that once and then realized it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I made sure I read the card very thoroughly. My my favorite well, is uh. Ramu doesn't say dull your opponent controls, so you can go. They go Al Cid. You go all right. Response: Kill your Al Cid. Mm-hmm. Dull my guy. Yeah, it's a, it's <laughs> kind of like it's kind of how people would do with a Glacia Al Cid combo. Dull my guy. You discard. Yep. Lots of. But yeah. Tasks. Um. Other than other, nothing has popped into mind just because nothing, no big tournaments have gone around. I guess that's fair. That's, as of the moment, and then it's been all kind of like locally. Mm-hmm. And there's there are some cards that I want to talk about. But I'm not gonna talk about <laughs> that. I would love to, but we were just we would just find out in January. I might run them. I might not. Yeah, we'll right. See how it goes. Everyone's got yeah. their own secret tech. See, that's the thing about these turn. Like people get all like butt hurt. Like they're like, oh, these people aren't talking about the cool techs, and how are we supposed to spread information? It's like, a, you have the same information we do. Let's be honest. Like, mm-hmm. I'm just figure it out. But b, it's like. There, there's stuff on the line, right? There's whether or not it's actual like hard cash money, right? Like there's trophies, there's product, there's it's worth it to you know yeah. take it a little bit seriously. And, 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 and it's, and it's, it's also, game, it's a, but and it's also one of those things to where like it's kind of like a you 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 put in your time and building it and everything, and eventually it'll be on the world and everything. Right. But you just want to show it off whenever you you can or you want to. Yeah. No. Like I told you, I at some point <clears> I kind of want to do a video on engines and. uh one of those would be the card that everyone forgets about is Riku H from Opus One, or not Riku H, sorry, Riku Rare, the four CP forward that bounces up to five backups. Like, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, back, back then, that back then that card was just like, it's just yeah, it was horrible. Really bad. But now yeah. you have things like Minfilia Minor, and like Sam did that in his video, and uh, he was saying that well, you can just pitch this, and like you play Sin, and then you follow it up with a Cleona and Ishtola. Then you go Riku, bounce your five backups, and do Giga Graviton. Mm-hmm. With, the, with all that CPU, just bounce back. And it's like, oh, well, get through my wall of protection and try to kill my sin. <laughs> like, there's a lot of cool stuff like that. And then he like he also pointed out, play Minfilia over and over and, like, get stuff back or whatever. So mm-hmm. there's, like, that's another card I would say is pretty improved is Riku that most people there's want to build one. There's, there's a lot of them. Uh, another one that I think is very... Small, just because I, I I don't think I've seen it being played before. Uh, just recently was the the new Cecil, wait the the Opus one. The Opus two. No, Opus one Cecil. The five drop. The one that everything has to target it. Yeah. Oh, okay. So like, oh hey, somebody's playing the new Snow. Keep dulling him. Yeah. <laughs> Keep dulling the same dude. <laughs> yep. Yeah, he's a cool card. And then, oh yeah, sorry, I I realized I completely forgot the rest of my thought. So the engine thing with Rico, I was gonna mention. Uh, there's a <clears> thing <throat> you can do with, um, like a combination of a Jito, Minfilia, Layak, and then any summon you want. Valfor is the one where you can do it infinitely. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. and you yeah. just go like Riku, bounce Minfilia and a Jito, then you pitch whatever two cards you want, replay, um, the Minfilia, then like. And you pitch the Ajito as one of them to get back the Ajito. Then you play Ajito, Asura to mm-hmm. untap everything, because you got that back with your Ajito. And then you go play whatever, get back. And then you end up with a hand of Valfor. You play Layak, and you have Riku on the board. You pass. On their turn, they attack. You untap. You Valfor, bounce, and then you can do it every turn. And it's mm-hmm. sweet. And there's stuff like that that you can do uh, with Riku. So. <clears throat> but then somebody drops a Zell on you. Yeah. <laughs> Break your Layak. Huh. Well, I <laughs> guess we'll try again. I, I, that, I think that's one you of the You still do reasons. it the next turn, though. If you have any yeah. cards in hand, you could just hard. Because I think you end up with one CP left over. So you could go mm-hmm. one plus discard two Valfort. But yeah, you'd have to have a lot of cards in hand for that. Yeah. Yeah, so do you have any other cards you want to talk about? Or are you. Um, is that pretty much I'm, your I'm, main. Uh... I'm, scrolling, I'm scrolling here through uh, FF decks. Um, I mainly want to focus on the fire cards. Uh. <laughs> From my looking at uh, VB still good. Uh, 
Sabin, like I said, I think it's the best power forward in the game. Uh, Zell's too good as a like a one or two of. Uh, Zande, um, my opinion has been iffy here and there. It all really depends since there's a lot of things that remove remove from the game. And that's saying something. Like Zande is such like if you just read what that card does, it's absolutely absurd. Yeah. But, like dealing nine k when it dies and it deals damage when it attacks and it's a nine k itself. Like that's pretty solid. Yeah. Um. From what I'm looking at, uh, those are the main things I want uh, to touch up. Maybe still good. Sabin's still good. Uh, I think Jack is a very good card, <clears throat> whether you're dealing damage or not. Mm-hmm. Because as, as far as being an aggressor, even if you are four damage, <clears throat> dropping a one co- one CP, nine K, ten K, let you have the brow. Yeah, right. Like it's almost yes. like a uh, fire's like, all right. We'll trade damage, hit you for two. And you're like, all right, I'll take two. Hit you for two. Yeah. I'll take two. And, oh, by like, the way, now I'm at four. One CP 10K, something else, and like kill your guy, and then mm-hmm. hit you for two. And it's like, oh, now I am I have like two blockers, and you're still hitting me with the same amount of stuff. And you start winning that race. And then you have unblockable, we'll finish it out. Yeah, but with, uh, what's it called? With fire, fire Dark is very easy. You can d- drop a Zodiac, clear their board, give yourself damage, use that damage as, as, as a resource, drop the Ject, and then drop like a sage. So with the four drop summon, a one CP forward, that's not too much of a hazard to go through. And then all you have is all these big, big dudes about a swing. Right. So yeah, uh, I think <clears throat> fire is gaining more of its own oomph that it needs. I still think it, it, there's a lot more to do with it. Uh, like, I think there's a lot of cards that other elements have that would be good with fire and that fire needs. Now, would you say that there's a thematic problem maybe with, like, the element fire itself? Like, fire is so traditionally burn everything, do damage, no control, yeah. just kind of rah. Like, that they're maybe trying to stick too much with the th- theme of fire to kind of, like, make it into other things that elements have. Like, we see ice do damage, dulling. Now we yeah. have haste for some reason. Discard like it has a lot of stuff that goes on, and fires mm-hmm. notoriously have maybe like one, two, or three. Yeah, that, that's been one of my biggest points with fire is those things. But with cards such as uh, Jacked and Meath, it's kind of going towards the right direction. There's still a lot more that needs to be done. <clears throat> but I think that would that could help with fire. I think I think my biggest point with fire is more ETBs with their forwards, other than like what. The new Jacked, uh, Sabin, and Vivi. It may like a four drop variant or something. Besides that, there's not a lot of ETBs in terms of in terms of fire, and that's why I think water decks are very good against it. And I is it, I don't think it's because of Min Woo. I think it's because of the bounce effects. It's because I played a forward, wasting my CP, get them back in my hand. You got no value out of the playing. Right? Yeah, I got no value out of the play. Whether it whether whether it's it's like a, if you're playing Ice or Lightning, where so many of these things do so much mm-hmm. well when they come into play or like, oh, you're going to bounce my five drop Barts. Okay, cool. Right. Play Untap everything. Or, or you're going to bounce by Zidane. All right. Thought sees you again. <laughs> it's like, yeah, like, like, I don't know, like so de- devastating uh, whenever somebody bounces my Zonde back right. into my hand. Cause that's just, I, I, it's I, not I, when he leaves, feel, when he dies. Yeah. Yeah. It, it feels, it, it feels like, like, I just just a, just a waste of a card sometimes. How insane uh, would Zande be if it was when he left the field? Uh, would he just be broken? Uh, because like Shantoto would wouldn't stop. Say, I would be I would be playing a lot of fire water. Like yeah, you like you could do the Opus Four double bounce thing where you bounce one of yours and bounce one of theirs, like bounce one in the hand and kill something. <laughs> Oof, that ha- that yeah, that'd be too broken. I think. Yeah. Uh, you know, um. I think Zande is fine how he's worded. I don't think he should be given anything more. Because if, cause if he's just left to the field, it's a lot harder for opponents to deal with. I think if you were to do something like that, you would have to have him target any forward. Mm-hmm. Not just your opponents, just to make it more fair. Because if, you, if you're, if you're, if you're, if you're going to give it like a Viking type of effect, I think that would be pretty de- I would think that would be pretty devastating well, on any board. It feels like 7 CP. Okay, then maybe. <laughs> then maybe. Yeah, right. But, all right, I think that covers about everything we wanted to cover. Uh, so, Fireman, you're going to stick with it from here on out, right? 
Oh, for sure. Uh, what's it called? The first week of Opus 7, I brought out the Mono Fire build. Now, is, Fire it, Dark. is it more... Do you, you still love it, though, right? It's not just like a pride thing where you feel like you have to do it? No. Or like, it's no, like I still, actually I still, like... I still, I still love it. I, I just... in uh, Every card game in Naruto and Magic, Magic, I ran... Uh, I would always either do Mono Red or Red White. Mm-hmm. Uh, or in Naruto, oh, I... <laughs> oh no believe me i've seen it uh and uh in naruto i would run fire and i just like the aspect of having these big freaking dudes just punching you in the face and you can't do anything about it <laughs> except defeat that's what i like about fire and it's just it's just an aspect of, like my competitive nature like uh, i love fighting games Ugh, a lot. Oh, smash that's, that, that's smash. where my competitive, that's where my competitive nature comes from i don't play like grappler big dudes but I just like people like I, I like getting you to a corner in Street Fighter and just going in as Ken and then just lighting you up, literally. <laughs> but yeah, I, I I think Fire is in a very fun place. I'm very happy with its performance so far. Just like week one, I took I took first uh, at locals. It did pretty well. Then I put it back for like a week or two. They didn't play it. Was tinkering with other decks. Brought it back. I think last week. And then topped again. So I'm very happy where it is. I would like more options, but mm. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a happy man. I'm, I'm all right where we're at. Awesome but it, 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 it does, I think it, it improvements are, I, I will greatly appreciate them. <laughs> Please, Kage, yeah, no. But all right. Well, thank you, Ian, for coming on. Uh, I know it's been kind of a long time coming, like I said. Uh, kind of apologies to not have you on oh, no, sooner no. like oh, no, it's just it's, it's kind of ridiculous actually part. we've had chad we've had alfred we had like a lot of people from locals on but we haven't had you yeah so. no it's a, uh it's like i said uh opus four over time was very hiatus for me i didn't come back to like opus six right and then it was it was nat it was nat's season in the air uh there was a <laughs> right. lot of things to do uh i was i was i was very much a play tester mm-hmm. uh, I, I was trying to because i didn't have any plans for going to nats because uh uh I, like my plans is go go to E3 next year because I always go every year. So I always right. save my that, that was my LA that right, was my right, LA yeah. trip. So I'm just saving money for that. So all right, and you guys were have been working for so for so much for it getting qualifiers and everything. I thought you guys deserved it more. So I want to give you guys a lime night. But <laughs> uh, next season, I'm coming for throats. No, right, I'm, <laughs> I'm coming. Well, yeah, I look no, forward I, to it. We're gonna get we're gonna get all of our strongest locals qualified as i say all you guys aren't strong but whoever wants to put their time in we'll get we'll get everybody qualified next yeah, year that's, yeah yeah sure. no of course like I, I put in my time Love when crew. i came back and it's it's chilled yeah so that's all uh for this episode of the choke of views uh i've been zach Brell, joined by ian Velez. and we will see you next time <laughs>